Right, this uh, gear train here is what I have set up to do my fine feed, but um, I need to change it because um, I want to cut uh, a one and a half millimeter thread. Um, bearing in mind, this is an imperial lathe with a eight teeth per inch lead screw. So I'm going to change the gears out. Um, I'll show you what I'm going to put in. <coughs> That's what I'm going to put in, a 21, a 50, 45, 35 and a 40 on the lead screw and uh, we'll spin that up and uh, see what it looks like. Uh, meshed up then so that's got a <coughs> that one has to mesh with that one which it is so I'll just uh, tighten that one off right, let's mesh in with that and we need to mesh that one with that one that one with that one, tighten that off. We need to mesh that one with that. That's it. I'll we'll tighten that off. that around, engage the, engage the gear. That's it, so we can just kick this paper out, get rid of that. That should have set the uh, optimum spacing for us. So, we're all ready there now. Let's get a test piece set up and uh, see what it's cutting. Right, what we're going to do first is just um, face that off and put a relief a relief groove in. Thirty-six thou. 
So I'm going to make make a relief cut of about 40 thou here. but because it's uh, so close to the chug I think I'll uh, give myself a little bit more of a margin of error. Right, now how I'm going to set the compound up blew that up. Right, so I don't have to do any trigonometry or anything uh, ridiculous like that. Just going to set that up. I'm just going to take just a tiny little scratch. A little dust to pass. Move that into the relief area. Now, going to zero my cross slide. And I'm going to zero. Compound. I'll back that out again because I made a lash up of that. Right, let's get a little touch on there again. There we go. Right, zero that. Right now I'm going to wind the cross slide in. 36 bow. Right, I'm going to wind the cross slide in 36 bow, and then I'm going to back it out with the compound. So I'm going to back that out with the compound. Okay, so now when I feed in on the compound, I'm not going to feed in on the cross slide, the cross slide is not going to move now. I'm going to feed in on the compound and when I get to the zero that I set on the compound I'll know I've got the correct depth without doing any maths or anything. Okay, so let's just get this uh, underway. Let's get the back gear in. So we can slow it down a bit. Everything's set up. Good, get it out. Engage the half nut, that's going to stay in now, the half nut, that's never going to move, well, let's just, just get a scratch part on that so we know where we need to be. Okay, a little scratch pass on that is going to come in at 60, okay. Get that out, let's engage the half nut, and we can go 65 on our first pass, okay? So that's actually coming in at 36. Okay. Disengage the motor. Don't try and do it by using the tumbler gears to reverse it because you're changing the gears. Although the tumbler gears and everything's all the same ratio, you might engage on a different um, cog, a different uh, position on the cog 
on the spindle or whatever and that's going to mess your ratio up so once you've got all of that set you've got to leave it there you can't do it like that you've got to do it on the motor normally for a small thread like this <coughs> i do it on the handle i turn the motor off because it'll be quicker but for this demonstration i'm going to do it on the motor and hope i don't crash into the chuck right let's um back it out put it in reverse According to this chart, I don't know if I'll be in focus there, it should be somewhere near. According to this chart, the first pass, this is I think it's for CNC with a um, ground insert. Um, the first pass is 22, 22, 21, 17, 14, 12, and then the last pass is 0 0.06. But I'm, I'm just going to do 5,000 passes and then a clean up pass. Just get this out of hand. Disengage <coughs> now because we've we've finished threading. Um, if it was a if it was a thread for real, I would be um, measuring it first before I disengage the half nut, but. As it's not, it doesn't matter, we're just going to try and uh, knock out a little chamfer to throw on this way. Oh, hang on. No, we're not, not that way. Not that way, we need to go and hit the forward to knock out a little chamfer, don't we? Turn that off. Let's see if we can get the camera in a bit closer. Right, that's that set. So you're in a little bit closer now. So should be able to see just a little bit of blue left on the tops of the threads. Well, this thread at one and a half millimeters. Um, it's got uh, a little flat on it, the same as down it down in the thread at the minimum diameter will have a flat on it from the flat on the cutter because the cutter will have a, a flat on it so it's important when you start this operation you've got the correct flat on the cutter otherwise your measurement is going to be completely screwed if you've got a, a completely sharp cutter 
then when you put your wires in here to measure it, the thread is going to actually be deeper than um, you. Sorry, it's going to be shallower than you really want it to. And if your flat is too wide, your thread's going to be deeper. So your wires are going to sit in more, and it's going to measure completely wrong. So it's very important that if you're doing a thread like this, that your cutter is exactly the right size, and your measurements are correct. Now. I'm confident that without measuring that, because I've done it to specification rather than doing it to fit, I'm confident that if I sent that thread halfway around the world, it would fit what it's meant to fit, because usually if you're making a thread like this, you don't always have the nut or whatever it's going into, the socket or whatever, to try the thread in. So you have to make it to specification and just hope that the other end that the nut or the socket or whatever was made to specification as well and then it all goes together so that's um single thread single point sorry single point thread cutting to depth on the cross slot on the compound without doing any trigonometry uh, not using the cross slide obviously the uh, the compound is set at um, 29 degrees or 29 and a half whatever you set yours to but uh, no more than 30 anyway um, for a 60 degree thread that is obviously which is what this is so I hope you enjoyed that um, be interested in your comments on it um, I know there's more than uh, one way to cut a thread in fact there's loads of different techniques of cutting threads um, I would actually prefer to cut threads backwards, but on this particular lathe, this 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 chuck is actually a screw-on chuck, so I can't cut threads backwards and upside down coming away from the chuck. I can cut them coming away from the chuck, but I can't cut them upside down because, um, well, you probably get away with it on a light thread, but on a you, you, on a, a, a deeper thread where there's any stress on the tool. The likelihood is the chuck is going to, it's not going to come off and go in your face or anything ridiculous like that. But if it starts to unwind, then it's going to throw your thread out and it's going to ruin it anyway. So, it's, it, you know, don't do it. But it's up to you. <laughs> it's not for me to tell you don't do it. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video. And there's your, um, there's your thread. Thanks for watching. Click and subscribe. Like if you liked it. Um, don't like if you didn't like it, I don't mind. But anyway, I'll see you on the next one.